When you think of expensive groceries, do you imagine something super bougie with great cuts of meat? Maybe somewhere in a big city where Instagram models can buy $20 smoothies and maybe get a back massage while they're waiting in line for the groceries? Well, at least that's kind of what I imagined, I guess. I didn't really imagine it being right here in Alaska. I'm trading in the truck for an airplane to go visit the most northern city in America. Chicago. <laughs> Hello and good morning from Barrow, Alaska, the most northern point in America. Right now, I'm closer to the North Pole than I am to Juneau, which is Alaska's capital. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Maverick, didn't you say that before? But this is the most north town that is accessible by airplane. The last time, I needed to be able to drive there with a truck. Because it's only accessible by airplane, supplies here can be relatively expensive, to say the least, put into light terms. So, I have reason to believe that the grocery store here could be the most expensive in America. This is the airport in Barrow, and there's really only one terminal and one airline. Wow. Little puddle jumper planes. I imagine those are going a little further north. You might also be noticing how dark it is right now. It's 9.30 a.m. here in Barrow, and it's still just this dark. Starting on November 18th, it's actually going to be complete darkness for most of the winter. Complete darkness in the winter and complete lightness in the spring place is different. So much like we see counties in the states, here in Alaska, we're divided up by boroughs. And right now we're in the North Slope Borough. So if you remember from a couple weeks ago when I went to Prudhoe Bay, it's actually part of the same borough. But where I'm at right now is the government capital for North Slope. So all of the facilities, including the police force, um, federal and regional and law enforcement are here, as well as the fire department. Which, believe it or not, is actually why people can live here. Those are the best paying jobs. All right, whereas I have an objective here in Barrow um, to get groceries, first things first is I know not to buy groceries on an empty stomach, so we gotta find some food. Might be a little easier said than done trying to find food here. I'm walking around aimlessly, man. I'll find something. No worries. We'll get there. Thanks guys. Do a backflip with it? I don't think so. No? What? You'll sue me? Okay. 
Why are you threatening me? That's enough of that. I just talked to the woman at the front desk and apparently um, some of the locals here got three whales today. Um, she's saying they're called bullhead whales and beluga whales, but she invited me to come and try some. So she said they have to thaw out. So we're gonna wait a little while here and try some whale. It's pretty cool. I don't even notice these guys. Howdy. Hello? Hey, all right, sweet, I'll come down. Thanks, hey. All right, there's my call. So this one is maktak, which they call it, when, when it's cooked, it's called maktak. Okay. But even it's raw, it's called unagi. Unagi. Yeah, so this is beluga, Bl which is still beluga. raw. Okay. But if you want me to cook it, I can cook it for you too. It's fine. But so I have uh, mustard, Sriracha. Sriracha and, and then uh, my own chili chili sauce that I cook myself. Nice. Alright, try the try the cooked one first. What is it called? Muktak. Muktak. And is this this isn't beluga? No, this that's is the white. beluga. But the white one is beluga. This is a okay. uh, bohe. Just fifty dollars to your uh, to your room. Okay. It's not really like a flavor to this. It's like no, the which one? This one. Yeah. So it's like a little fishy. Flavor. Yeah. But it like, just tastes yeah. It's like blubbery, like mm -hmm. it's like yeah, chewy. Yeah, I told you earlier, it's like rubbers. And then you said this is beluga. Beluga, so that's this like, is like more like the like rich whale, I guess. For yeah, like, the for richer yeah. richer people. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the royal. Yeah, royal. The royal whale. whale. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's tough. It's good. It's like different than anything I've ever had. These look like little mushrooms. <laughs> little mushrooms. They look like little mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> The beluga when it's raw is more of my favorite one. So like it's the beluga when it's raw is your favorite. Yeah, I like uh, I like the cooked one better because this way way easier to way easier to eat. To eat, yeah. yeah. To swallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just swallow, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't beluga. Care when I go out there, raw she... beluga. Well, there you have it. I tried whale for the first time. Raw beluga and cooked. Bullhead. It was actually pretty good. The blue was so rough, like tough. All right, now that I have a full stomach, I think I'm ready to explore the grocery store. And figure out just how inflated prices here actually are. All right, here we are at the grocery store, Stuck Pack. The main grocery here in Barrow. Right when I walked in, I was immediately overwhelmed at $56 ice pops, $180 regular five by five foot rugs, and they even had a section for TVs. A bottle of barbecue sauce will cost you six bucks. A 20 pound bag of rice is $38. A Lunchable will cost you $7. A carton of 18 large eggs is $6. And you can actually get a TV here for 1500 bucks. They even have an arcade game you can purchase for 900 if you want to play some NBA Jam. Hmm. In the grand scheme of things, really not that bad. We spent 8902 on some crab and all the ingredients for a single serving of Dungeness crab fried rice. Fortunately for me, on a day like today, my food would stay completely cold out here because it's only 23 degrees. The record low for Barrow, Alaska is negative 57 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and a high of just 79 degrees. Record high. I'd be curious as to why people inhibit this place. Well, over 60% of the population here in Bango is from Alaska natives, the Inopiate tribe to be exact. But this tribe in specific harvesting of whales is very popular and it's one of the few places that they can do it. And I actually was lucky enough to try some harvested whale last night, some beluga as well as some bullhead whale. And it wasn't too bad actually. When I get home from trips, I spend more time behind a screen than I care to admit. And if there's one thing I've learned, you need equipment that's gonna keep up with you on the road and off. And MSI's new creator Z16P does it in style. Not only is this thing fast with the latest processor up to an i9, smooth render speeds for raw HDR 8K footage, and it's exclusive six gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, giving you a smooth and stable connection wherever you are. But it's also so stylish. To its brushed aluminum CNC finish, or the 1610 ratio true pixel display that provides crystal clear image and true color. And it also has touchscreen display support with the MSI pen. But if you still, for whatever reason, don't believe me, check it out for yourself at the MSI website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back on the road. So to put it into perspective, the North Slope is about one and a half times the size of Minnesota. And Minnesota is home to 5.8 million people in the North Slope, including Prudhoe Bay and Barrow is like, the population's like 6,500. And that's with all of the people that are seasonally here as well for oil or what have you. It's a lot of land, not a lot of people. See you, thank you so much. All right, Barrow, it's been fun, but now it's time to catch our flight back to the truck. Good old Alaska. Woo! Probably the smallest airport that I've ever been to. We're getting on a 737, heading back to Anchorage. There used to be two to three flights that flew in and out of this airport every day, but now after COVID, it's kind of doing down to one. And they actually used to fly 737 combis here, which is like really unheard of one of the few places in America that did it. But according to a local, they had stopped in like 2018. We got a short two hour flight before we get back to Anchorage. And then uh, it's cooking from there. back here yeah okay we're back in honorable mention some two things that I saw while I was walking out of the store $69 watermelon and $16 gallons of milk but we've got our groceries safely here. I'm really happy that TSA didn't decide to take those cans away because I, uh, I've never traveled with cans of corn before. It's a lot warmer here, 49 degrees. We've got a fair bit of these shirts left. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop these down a little bit in price. The reason they're so expensive is because the uh, the way that we make these shirts is they're not the cheapest to make. 
it's called a garment dye. And what that means is that it's not like an actual true black. So each shirt kind of has like a vintage wash to it. If you can see that, it's like more like a gray. That dyeing process requires it to be hand dyed and just makes it a more expensive shirt. So I'm gonna lower them down by like five bucks. And uh, if you order one in the next week, I'll throw in some stickers. But I think they look nice. It's actually taken me a long time to get used to like wearing this. This is maybe honestly too much for me, even still. Just cause it's my name. Definitely gonna need this. And this, no, I don't need that. And this stove is nasty, but we're gonna use it anyway. All right, Ethan, I need to, I need to get this rice. I don't know if it's gonna need any water. Usually I like to use day old rice for fried rice, so this would be good. Alright. Now I wanna get this pan nice and hot. I wish I had a wok. Well, got a wok. Uncle Roger would not be enthused. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just flinging rice every which way, huh? What do you think about this crab? Ah. It's good to go. That's what I think. All right. There it is. The Dungeness Crab fried rice that cost me a hundred bucks to make. Well, that and I still have half a Dungeness Crab yet, so. I guess first things first. Let's see what kind of quality crab we're working with here. Mm. Definitely tastes a little a little frozen funk, but not bad. But our meat is good. Body meat's not my favorite anyway. I forget how big of a mess crab is. It's like destroying my drug right now. Wow, that knuckle, too, is usually, like, the worst to crack, the one that's right next to the claw. And on this frozen one, it just busts. Oh, my. The one upside is that the meat's just falling off. All right. Yeah, let me show you what I'm talking about. This meat is usually just, like, pure white. You can see it's kind of got, like, a yellow hue to it on that side. And the red, in person, like, isn't as vibrant as I'm usually used to it being. But, again being frozen is probably just the reason behind that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's still pretty good. Just wonder how long it's been sitting there for or if it like thawed out in transportation or what, but big claw meat piece. You know what? I'm gonna spice it up on this one.
Hope it's good. Oh. As far as crab goes, I'd give that one like a 5 out of 10. But as far as like where it's hitting right now, like a like a 7-ish. Now as far for the rice, let's see. Presentation, not that great. Those peas look busted. That corn looks mushy. Those carrots look mushy also. Rice looks actually all right. Well, let's see how it tastes. Well. It's not bad, it's just like, it's missing the pop of like fresh veggies. Like the crab meat should be what carries it. It doesn't look that bad though. And it's not like it tastes bad, it's just like not, it's just bland. A bunch of muddled flavors together. It's not bad. It's just not good. Add a little seasoning on there. So she's a little better. It's kind of growing on me now. We're getting, we're going up. The more crab was the play. All right, we're going seven and a half. Final answer. Oh, that's a mess. How about that? Nice and clean. All right, well, that'll about do it for this episode. This is uh, probably one of my last videos in Alaska. The next couple days, I'm gonna be going home. It's been almost a little a little more than a month here and it's been a lot of fun made a lot of good memories of my family um and this last trip to barrow was definitely just a nice icing on the cake finish it off on the right foot hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode i want to do some more episodes like this where i like can kind of leave the truck behind and go to some places by plane so it's kind of my little experiment and trying out new content but I will see you guys in the next episode. Not really sure where I'm going to be yet, but as always, until next time, you already know the drill. Just keep on trucking.